Good morning, Madam Chairman, board members, Mr. Huckleberry. My name is Marla Clausen, and I am here today to emphatically encourage you to vote no on this bond for the simple reason that we cannot afford it. It will cost our county $816,000 alone just to put this bond on the ballot. Pima County is $1.3 billion in debt. Property taxes have risen 24% in two years, and we continue to pay $19 million a year on a bond that we approved in 1997. Years of fiscal mismanagement, misuse of road funds, and excessive discretionary spending have gotten us to where we are today. Example one. Mr. Huckleberry and his board approved 1.2 million of approved road money for a down payment on soccer fields. Everyone knows this, we listen to the radio, we all know that, right? July of last year, 7.5 million was approved for soil for that soccer field, and the remaining cost of the project, which tops out at $25 million, is included in a bond proposal that has not been approved by the voters yet. To me, that is extreme fiscal mismanagement. Example two, Mr. Huckleberry, without board approval, move 2.2 million in approved, approved road funds back into the general fund. Now he did say he did this to pad the general fund because of the upcoming state cuts. I just want you to hold that thought for a minute because I'll revisit it in a second. Uh, example three, excessive discretionary spending is really this bond right here. These are wonderful projects for people, you know. These are really great. What community wouldn't want these projects? However, when we, when we approve this discretionary spending at the cost of our infrastructure and public health and safety, there's a problem here. As I studied these projects, I noticed something else. Um, this was a glaring item that kept popping out in. The operations and maintenance costs are not included in this bond package at all. I have a few examples here. Pima County softball tournament, operating maintenance costs, $101,000 per year to be paid through the general fund. $40,000 to be paid through the general fund, $260,000, $200,000. It's not covered in the bond package. For um, so $29 million could be a reasonable estimate coming out of the, our empty general fund. <laughs> the bottom line is this. We need to stop the fiscal mismanagement, the misuse of our road funds, and we need to get our fiscal house in order. That's why I'm asking to say no to this bond. Thank you. My name is Binky Luckhurst. I guess I'm representing, I know I'm representing the Dearsons at the Tucson Museum of Art, but I did check that I wasn't going to speak. But that's okay, because I could talk. <laughs> well, actually, you technically did to speak. I did? You did. Sorry. Okay. Very briefly, I totally support this bond. I am very active at the Tucson Museum of Art. I hope everybody here participates and comes and sees everything that's offered. And um, the more we can do, the better. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speakers are Barbara Fleming, Jeff Singleton, and Melinda Burge. Barbara Fleming. Barbara had to leave. Jeff? Good morning, Madam Chair, uh, uh, Supervisors, Mr. Huckleberry. Thank you for uh, letting me speak this morning. Uh, I thought this had been adjusted earlier for me. Um, I'm here as a citizen of Tucson, and I'm also here as the uh, Executive Director of the Southern Arizona Land Trust and an advocate of affordable housing. There are many components to this bond that uh, I support wholly, um, including affordable housing. I wish it was a little bit bigger component and line item. Uh, but, uh, and as mentioned earlier, I believe in Mr. Shalupski, um, the past has shown that investments in affordable housing get leveraged probably more than any other dollars in the bond package. So uh, I look forward to uh, uh, its passage or it being on the ballot and uh, uh, going to the public for a vote. So clearly I'm here in support uh, of the uh, bond package. Um, a couple of, a little bit of data just 
uh, so you, you understand that even though we're in the sixth year of a recovery uh, for many people in our city, uh, it doesn't feel like one. Um, a couple of recent studies, one by the National um, Low Income Housing Coalition has shown that is in the bottom, uh, Arizona is in the bottom five of all of our states in the gap uh, for affordable housing. Uh, and that's affordability and availability. Uh, and it, this study has recently been published. And it basically shows that in, in the city of Tucson, metropolitan area, we have two uh, families for every one home, of affordable and available home uh, to rent. Now this is on rental statistics. Uh, and that's for very low income. And those are HUD definitions. For extremely low income, we have a gap of one home available for every four families. So as you can see, this is uh, the gap is getting bigger, and we need to address this. And these bond funds are the uh, catapult or the launching pad for a number of projects that will help us to bring more affordable units uh, to the town. Uh, National Association of Realtors also has done a recent study on Tucson and uh, basically it shows that uh, recently uh, rents have increased by uh, I believe 11 percent while during the same period income locally has gone down over three percent so the gap gets bigger we need more dollars for affordable housing thank you, thank you. Melinda Bird. Melinda Then let's move to James Crampton, Emily Funk, and Joe Winfield. James Crampton, Emily Funk, Joe Winfield. Oh, Joe, go ahead. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, and uh, Mr. Tuckleberry. Tuckleberry? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> You'll probably appreciate, uh, Mr. Huckleberry, that my middle name is Castleberry. So. <laughs> uh, my name is Joe Winfield, and I'm uh, here representing Jamie Kingsbury, who's the acting forest supervisor for the Coronado National Forest. And <clears throat> she uh, expresses, on behalf of the forest, our support for the Southern Arizona Regional Orientation Center. We are among a robust uh, partnership uh, that will collaboratively operate and manage the proposed Southern Arizona Regional uh, Orientation Center. We believe the center is an opportunity to engage new audiences and increase visitor satisfaction. It will provide a unique uh, venue to promote understanding, respect, and stewardship of regional, cultural, historical, and natural resources and encourage responsible <coughs> economic development. Uh, we're caretakers of uh, nearly 200 million uh, acres of public uh, land and host almost 3 million visitors annually. You may be interested to know that the Coronado National Forest January 2015 Visitor Use Report showed that over 50% of the visitors to the forest stay more than one night with an average spending per party of $511. The proposed Southern Arizona Regional Orientation Center will help ignite visitors and residents' passion for public lands and parks for the bolstering our tourism industry. Thank you for the work that you're doing on behalf of our community, and I'm glad I could bring a little levity to the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> Mark Blakeman, Denise Shepard, and Emily Perez. Yeah, Mark. Chair, after this group of speakers, I think we'd be good if we took a five-minute break. Give us a chance to catch up with ourselves, okay? Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the Board of Supervisors, Madam Chair, and Mr. Huckleberry. I'm Mark Blake, and I'm President and CEO of the Tucson Symphony Orchestra. I'm here speaking this morning in support of the Bond Initiative and want to offer my words of support and encouragement and appreciation. While considerable effort and work has already been accomplished in the preliminary stages of the bond proposal, the Tucson Symphony and its leadership understands that much, much more work 
is yet to be done to support the bond initiative in a public vote this November. I'm here to offer my assurances that the symphony will work tirelessly to advocate for the bond issue. On an annual basis, roughly 100,000 people enjoy a wide range of programming opportunities through the Tucson Symphony. The symphony, its staff, volunteers, and board of trustees will work to educate our constituents as to the benefits of the total bond package, the economic impact of the bond projects, and to the importance of moving our community forward through these engaging and important capital investments. Uh, I believe that the arts and cultural sector in this community is very vibrant and important uh, to, to the quality of life. I think that we make a difference in people's lives and we have a real economic impact uh, estimated to be roughly $89 million annually and an additional $8 million in tax revenues. Uh, we're a formidable group and uh, we will band together and we want to support this and we will educate and encourage our constituents to pass this bond initiative if you will put it on the ballot in November. Thank you. Thank you. Denise Shepard, Emily Perez. Good morning. I live in unincorporated Pima County in Supervisor Miller's district. I own a business in the city of Tucson and I own commercial property in the city of Tucson. And certainly this bond election, if it goes to the voters, would affect me in both my personal and professional capacity. I am a lawyer and, and your name for the Denise Shepherd. Okay, thank you. I am a lawyer and a licensed fiduciary, and I take care of the elderly and the disabled. I manage their money, and certainly this bond election would affect them. But the effects are more positive than they are negative. Yes, it would cost some money, but those monies would also be reinvested in our community. And a healthy, vibrant, growing community best serves the most vulnerable in our population. I also serve on the board of directors of the Reed Park Zoological Society, and I have for many years, and I have participated both in the first round of committee meetings and in this most recent round of committee meetings, and I've been struck by the broad-based discussion. If this bond discussion has done nothing more, it has created a forum for our community to talk about what's important for this county. This county needs growth, it needs economic development, it needs our infrastructure supported. As a business owner, if I don't support my business, and sometimes that means with financing, then my business is likely to fail. And I've been in business for 30 years, so I must be doing something right. I would strongly urge the Board of Supervisors to continue this discussion by passing this bond election on to the voters in November and remember, when it passes, and I do say when, um, the money's not going to be spent the very next day. It's going to be spent in a careful, managed way. There's lots of rules for spending bond monies. And with projects like the Reed Park Zoological Society project, it will represent an influx of monies into our community, more than twice the cost of that project as we have committed to raising more than than what we are asking for for this committee. I thank you for your time, and I urge you to put this bat on the ballot in November. All right, Emily Perez. Oh, there you go. Good morning, members of the board. My name is Emily Perez. I am 22 years old, and I'm currently a senior in college at the University of Arizona, or as I like to call it, a professional student and I'm a resident of Pima County. I would simply like to put on the record I am against this bond. It's sad to think that the town I've grown to love during my college career will not be a promising area to settle down. The fact is, Tucson, there's already a brain drain problem. Would the state of the local economy if would be frankly not an ideal area to have a job after college or even start a business. Pima County already faces a great debt. I'm 22 now. I don't know, I do not want to be paying off this debt when I am 60, nor do I want my children to be paying the cost for squandering of taxpayer dime. We need to focus on getting our priorities straight and settle our debt 
above all. Thank you. We are going to, it is quarter to 12, we'll be back here at 11.55. Thank you. 